Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Carbonite Bounty BS with the nerds here. Um, how's everybody doing today? Good. Good. How you doing? Real quick, all right. real good. So glad to be back with everybody listening, watching uh, on all platforms um, again. But uh, we have another special edition episode here. We decided to break down, um, take a little sidebar and break down another view of the Clone Wars, which was the animated version of the Clone Wars movie. And before we get into our discussion points today about the movie, uh, how about DP, you break us down and let everybody know where they can reach us. Nerdcyclopedia.com. That's basically where you make sure that you hit all our um, different social media platforms and get in touch with us at Nerdcyclopedia on Twitter, Instagram, um, also Facebook. Make sure that you are emailing us that feedback. We love hearing your feedback uh, right on our Car Carbonate Bounty BS page, right on Facebook, and also at nerds um, at nerdcyclopedia.com. Um, make sure that you are downloading our podcast on iHeartRadio, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, um, TuneIn, wherever you listen to your favorite podcast, we are there. And if you are, you know, watching us on YouTube and also on Facebook, make sure that you're sharing. And also hitting that notification um, and that like button. So anyone who um, um, basically ba anyone who wants to watch us can actually, you know, um, get into us. Appreciate that. And without a further ado, guys, um, you know, we'll just jump right into it here. Uh, what were some of your initial reactions of the uh, show, Ken? Just getting on it kind of into uh, the, the movie. All right. Considering I've never watched, never watched this before. Haven't watched any of the animation except for small little snippets here and there. Um, I I enjoyed the movie. I thought it was it was better than I expected. Um, I'm not a big animation fan, so I like my animation uh, like Simpsons. I'm okay with. Uh, I like my anima animation for comedy and slapstick, and that's about it. So I'm a I'm a fan of animation in that respect. I was a little hesitant to get into something where they were animating like my life, like my face. <laughs> uh, that was really, uh, you know, so I had to really kind of work through a few things. To, but I sat down and watched the movie. It was it was great. Uh, great story. Good characters. Um, and like we're going to get into, uh, we see a little bit of different develop character development with, uh, you know, characters like Obi-Wan and such. But really good to watch this now with Mandalorian being out because this like pretty much connects it to the, the the normal Star Wars universe like like with a nice little bow and tied up real nice by Dave Filoni so I, I liked it it was really good. What do you think, Hitch? You know, for me, <clears throat> you know, th this movie is sort of a, it's an off it's like a side quest. You know what I mean? It's not sort of like the mainline the mainline movies. Um, I thought the animation was good. I thought the plot was actually the plot was interesting. I, I thought bringing in, you know, the huts was an interesting idea to sort of bring in, um, you know, as sort of a, the undesirable underbelly of the universe and the huts sort of rep, you know they represent that. Um, I thought that carrying around Jabba's son was interesting. I didn't know Jabba had a son. That's that's a that was news <laughs> for me. Uh, so cool to cool to find that out. And it reminded me a lot of. Something we see in modern Star Wars in the Filoni verse, like we were talking about, which is the relationship of uh, Din and the child, right? Din and Grogu. We see them carting, we see this whole carting him around the galaxy thing playing out in in the Clone Wars. So that was very interesting as well. And I like the uh, introduction uh, of Ahsoka. I like this relationship that she's building with Anakin, forcing Anakin to come to grips with his own. Um, headstrongness by making him train someone else. It's really a brilliant strategy, honestly, by the Jedi Council. You got to give him credit. Right. And what about you, DP? Being a neutral. Um, being the casual neutral, coming from you know, uh, um, I, I remember when this movie came out, and that's where I was. I was still sitting back and not really being a you know hardcore Star Wars fan. You know, seeing stuff casually here and there, and I heard so much backlash when this movie came out, like. What the heck is this? Why is it animated like this? You know, what's going on? And it has really, what, what does it really have to do with like the main canon and stuff? You know, hardcore fans seem to, you know, you know, find it decent and everything. But casual fans or just, you know, casual Star War fans, I just remember it was just such backlash coming from it. It was too childish and it was just, just some craziness. 
me coming after after um never watching this um just coming to see this seeing this you know after um you know so long and everything this is my first time seeing it i thought it was pretty good i was like this is not what i was expecting and when you get such build up in as far as hype on something that's supposed to be really bad and then you know that it has that low of a bar and then when you actually see it it's like okay well um it crossed that bar for me so it wasn't a great movie um, you know, but for it to be the introduction, you know, introduction of, you know, Ahsoka Tano, I thought it was pretty good. I'm sitting up here like I'm watching this. I never I didn't expect to see her in this movie so soon. I heard she was in Clone Wars, but I didn't expect to see her here, you know. Um, so that was a pleasure to see. Um, um, I like I like I like their developing relationship, you know, um, her being for uh, your um, Anakin being forced to, um, you know, have a Padawan and everything. So that was um, that's that's real decency. It sort of the the um, Obi-Wan was a little like what I've seen in the um, regular, you know, Attack of the Clones and um, also the Phantom Menace. But he was a lot more developed here, you know, right. Um and I mean, I mean, it's not Obi Wan. Um, yeah, Obi Wan. Yeah. Um, and then Anakin, I was a little jar ba- with him basically not looking like Anakin. You know, Hayden Christensen and everything. So they have a whole different um, animation type, you know, for him. And he's a lot more talkative, a lot more articulate <laughs> than what we see with Hate, <laughs> you know, in the uh, in the Star Wars movie. So that was a um, difference, you know, to see. But it's still the same canon. So. Um, I liked it. Um, it wasn't great, but I liked it enough, especially, you know, a lot of the um, rep, you know, um, the back and forth between uh, uh, Soka and Anakin. Right. Uh, and just kind of following up with everybody's thoughts. So me kind of being at the time, one of the, I guess we'll consider hardcore moviegoers, I was one that gave backlash, um, didn't like it, didn't understand it. You know, I, I slaughtered the movie. Thought it was horrible. Um, <laughs> over the over the years that I've seen Dave Filoni become on to Lucas Arts, Lucas Films, and develop as a person and as a director, um, even now I've I've come to appreciate what it is because, and we'll get into this. I mean, he is a pupil of George, but he has his own view on the Star Wars universe. It's of uh, you know maybe a portion of George's, but a different spin. And I and to be honest, after watching The Mandalorian and some of his other work. Uh, including Star Wars Rebels, um, it, it's it's become a really good watch. Now that I see, I mean, and we'll get into this, the way he develops the characters, and this is not, a, and none of this, I don't want anybody to feel this is a slate of George. I mean, he is the the godfather. This is his baby. So I, I don't want it to come off as a slate as George, but I just kind of like Filoni's take on characters, and maybe it's because of the episode format and the, the series format that he did these in that we get just better development. Uh, we get a developer. Uh, I feel a better developed uh, Obi Wan of what I felt that he should have been. Um, we kind of get that dash daring Anakin that we all wanted to see. And, and as as Kendo alluded to, we get kind of that general, that you know, war hardened version of Obi Wan that that is not that jealous character you kind of got in those three movies and that kind of resentful type person. As well as one of the biggest things I've noticed is the development with uh, even Master Yoda. You know, in the movies, it sem- seemed like that the Jedi were more militarized and it was all about the downfall of the council. This is that part of where you see Ilmus Yoda, like kind of like a Qui-Gon type character, allowing these relationships, allowing feeling to come in, things like that. So different, interesting take. Definitely, I wouldn't slate it because if you're a hardcore moviegoer, it's going to be a different view. But as we alluded to, this kind of ties Filoni's whole ideology of what he felt star wars is and going forward hopefully this will be the vision my only regret is once again i I just seeing this just wish i would see something or what he would thought of you know qui-gon as a character because obviously we'll get into as far as dooku and things like that but uh yeah i I just wish to see what he would have done with qui-gon jinn um as a character as far as his ideology of star wars well let's not say never first of all because these right. characters are still around and, and you know if, if he wants to make that story he definitely can so if they yeah. wanted to show us like obi-wan flashbacks to obi-wan as a as a padawan so his adventures with qui-gon before the phantom Menace, right. i think they would definitely be within their rights to do it and i agree i'd like to see that 
to your point about Count Dooku, he, that was the highlight of the whole movie for me was Count Dooku. I thought the performance was excellent, and I thought that character translated a lot better into this medium just because it's not, you know, Christopher Lee is, is an excellent actor, but he's, he was just old. And there's a certain, like, like a energy, a certain, like, a charisma that is more energetic that you get out of this Dooku. So I liked the performance, and I liked how that characterization worked a lot. It made me really – I would really like when he was getting screen time. It was good stuff. Yeah. yeah. I liked also – I liked uh, how you got to see where the, where the Empire sort of built – was started from. Because, like, even your background, T. Mitch, that was – that was basically the the uh, the, the Republic, the cruiser, the, and all the the the, the generals and the, you know, the captains. They were all in basically what we now know as Imperial garb, Imperial Navy. Yeah. You know, yes. it was so. Actually, thinking about it, like watching, I, like I know we're gonna do uh, we're gonna do uh, you know the next the, ne- the next movie, but this really was actually a better film than the the Clone Wars. I mean, I. <laughs> The, attack this, of the clones the attack of the clones just had a lot more meat yeah. to it and yeah. right yeah it, yeah the battles were better and they yeah. kind of got they got all the fluff out i think that's what you're alluding to with the feloni universe is less yeah. fluff more more tough so <laughs> and, and it, it it really was a better movie it'd be great if they just did this well i don't know i mean i always like see again that's my problem with animation it's like you know i like funny animation i like my slapstick i like bart simpson i like mickey mouse you know animation i'd like to see this live action you know filoni could totally do that now make it a make it a series and and do it do do it up but i think that was a that was an important piece for me it really filled in a lot of blanks and like i said no fluff all tough just battle scenes and good characters yeah, I mean, I, I do definitely agree with your point. I mean, it's just one of those things, you know, just the more we get Filoni, it's just like the more, it's like, you know, the, it's like the need for it, you know, it's a hunger for it, you know. Kitch has the money out. I mean, I have more than, I have, you know, I have wallet, credit card, checkbook, you know, whatever, you know, Bitcoin, you know, whatever, you know. It's just like little George, little George. <laughs> In a better frame of mind, like little George, he's he's ready to go. Yeah, it's just you know, it just his stories, like you're saying, it's a clear, and maybe it's not, I guess, to George. Maybe it's just the the age gap and the storytelling and where it came from. I mean, George is old school, uh, you know, the the, the Filoni's of people, the younger, the you know, the millennial, the sense of the Star Wars, you know, mm-hmm. cast. So it's just him maybe relaying the stories on a more you know personal basis or. You know, maybe more, um, I don't know, you know, character driven rather than we're saying the fluff. And, you know, there's what, 25 minutes of the Attack of the Clones that we didn't need that no. you could have added. Yeah. Some, Nobody some needed yeah. any of that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We've talked yeah. about you know, We would have left a lot of stuff on the floor, right? <laughs> you know, yeah. So, you know, now that you're talking about that, um, Mitch, T. Mitch, um, Anakin, um, Ahsoka and um, Obi-Wan were a lot more defined. You know, as far as you know, character, it seemed like their the focus, their 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 voice and everything in the movie was a lot more defined here than it was in like the first two movies. Where I mean, it, it was okay, it was a good start for him, but he took a um, he took that as a jumping off point to make the characters more defined. Was sort of like jumped or jarred me a little bit was how fast it went as far as like the movie. You know, the movie moved a lot faster. Maybe that's what you're talking about, Ken. The mm-hmm. movie moves a lot faster than what you would have had with a um, George Lucas, you know, type movie. Maybe it's because of the medium, the animation, whereas you get to do a lot more. You get a lot more jumping around and get a lot more action than you would in a um, in a live action film, um, where you know the movement and is isn't as is um, you know smooth and flowy as like you know animation would. But um, I I could have wished the animation was a lot better, you know. Um, and unlike Ken, I mean, I could I could take my animation, you know, a lot more serious, which I appreciated, you know, in this a bit. But it just it still seemed a little, you know, kiddish and everything, uh, which was a, a different um, departure from Attack of the Clones, which I felt was a little more serious, you know. So it'll be interesting to see when we get to like the next movie, how the um, dynamics of what we've seen here compares, of course, fills in the gap 
of what we see or, you know, what we, you know, um, um, broach upon, you know, um, the, um, the next movie, the next okay. episode. So, yeah, I mean, it was a, um, it was a real different take on the same characters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Yeah. We got new characters, too. I mean, Captain yes. Rex. Captain Rex. Mm -hmm. Yo, yeah, oh, yeah. Very little screen time, but man, you, you got behind that guy. And when he found out that he had to do this by himself, he went, Obi-Wan couldn't come. He was like, okay, let's go. Let's complete this mission. I mean, he was a great, he was a great character. Cody was another one. Yeah, and, Cody's good. and and they were uh, oddball, even the ones that, I mean, you really, he, I, I think Filoni has a way to, with just with writing, and he's a way to build a character with almost nothing. Like, right. almost right. no development at all of a sudden you're like invested in this in this character like they could do a they could do a captain rex spinoff like a whole thing like how did he come from not being a clone trooper how did he get promoted so quickly up to be a he, he no helmet you know yeah. so the, the <laughs> you don't even have to wear a helmet anymore that's how i like, yeah and, and so he's just standing there he, he's he's basically a, a clone but he's not like he's he's a, he's he's a step up clone. He's clone point two oh, you know. And he has and he has uh, he has that great uh, military response and compassion too, because there's there's a lot going on there. It's pretty complex. So I, I liked him also. I don't want to yes. spoil anything for anybody, but uh, if you no. watch Rebels, if you watch Rebels and um, Clone Wars, you will get the the backstory to what you're asking for. By the way, so, so their I'll... backstory is is in there. And uh, just one final point to touch up with DP saying, I do agree with you about the animation, but like we were speaking off air, you got to remember this is 08. So it's kind of like yeah. if you're a, a super yeah. nerd, kind of like comparing Dragon Ball to <laughs> Dragon Ball Z. I mean, <laughs> if, if you look at the animation of the last probably three, the three seasons, including last season, which was a final, it's night and day. They clean up the, the editing, the picture. It's just because we were talking about it off air. It's a little rough. But if you look at this last well, season, last three, I, it's, it's a lot more cleaner. So, so I've, I've seen up to like episode five, I was texting Hitch, you know, um, you know, back and forth. Cause he was giving me his opinion on, on like, you know, the movie and everything. <laughs> right. And, um, I've seen up through episode five and it's a difference already as far as animation. Oh. And I think, um, me watching this and then actually taking, you know, part in like, you know, the first five episodes, um, it's just gotten me into like the universe, like, you know, just a lot more. And um, just correct me if I'm wrong here, T. Mitch. Um, the clones, they have personalities, you know. Right, and that's another thing. We, 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 it, just, it, it makes that's us, like I said, that's it's different. <laughs> the felony verse thing, I tell you, it's just it makes it so different because when we see the movies, they were just you know versions of the original uh, Django um, right. that had no no lines, no dialogue, and. And right. like Kendo is alluding to, and even Hitch, I mean, it's just like the way he develops character, and it's so quickly. We don't need a 40-minute segment. We don't no. need a battle, Naboo. We just, we're in and out, you know? And it, I just think, yeah. especially with children, I like the attention to detail because their attention span is so short. And the fact that you can develop characters so right. quickly and move to the right. next thing, I move think is thing. Yeah. so important. And yeah. it's, it's brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was very impressed with, um, like I said, this is not to say that, okay, this is like one of the, the better movies and everything. I mean, it's not, a, it's 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 an okay movie, you know. Yeah. It is what it is, you know, for, for what it is and everything. But it was just a lot better than what I expected because it was just so much backlash and everything. Um, if, if um, I, I read a little bit on like, you know, Ahsoka Tano's introduction and everything and how, I guess back then, T. Mitch, a lot of people hated her. You know, they thought she was just like annoying, and you know, why is this? You know, this this little girl with you know um, Anakin and everything, and we'll see more Anakin, Anakin, Anakin. And I guess as the series grows, they've grown to love her. Whatever, whatever happens to her, it uh, it one eighties with the fan base and everything. Because what I seen here is definitely not what I see when when she appeared in the Mandalorian. You know, um, it's a whole well, she's grown up. You know, in the Mandalorian. And here it's it's a good way to see how she how um how direct she is, how um um she she looks at Anakin and is like, okay, well, I know you're my um, you know, um, you know, my mentor and everything, but still I, I can say a lot of stuff. I can uh, I can chide you, I can make fun of you and still respect you, you know. 
for what you are and everything. So that was a good thing to see instead of her just, just like, you know, worshiping at the, the ground he walks on and everything. She's challenging him. You know, she's trying to make him better, you know, at what he is and everything. And that was a good thing to see develop between the two, at least for this movie. Um, and I even had a, uh, I've seen some of the, the Clone Wars, uh, the, the little mini episodes. And I actually thought having, I knew nothing of uh, Asuka or anything, didn't know who she was. And I thought that they were dating Anakin and Asuka. I mean, I thought they were. Like a thing, because their relation, as their relationship develops, they're more of a boyfriend girlfriend type of thing. The way they, the way they, they scrap a little bit, but then there's a fondness too. Uh, but I guess you would get that with a, a, a teacher and a student if they're close, and you know they're male female, so right. that kind of makes sense too. But I totally missed. I was way off base on the whole thing, so I don't apologize to everybody about that. But that. And, <laughs> and, and I tried to really watch some of the Clone Wars ep individual episodes, but I never really caught on. But I'm going to give him another chance. I'm going to give him after after watching this. Well, then Anakin, they, they have to pop up a sign for Anakin that says, "Sorry, girls, he's married." You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> right. It has to, it's a it's a thought bubble that has yeah. to pop up and say, oh, "Taken no, be by oh, Senator." It, yeah, right. sorry. Go find some other uh, Jedi Knight to. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I know you re, uh, you uh, listen to a lot of things. Did you notice early on in the movie the kind of I don't want to say shade because it's his pupil, but the dialogue that they asked and kind of Filoni threw in there about the way Anakin was taught by Obi Wan when they did the introduction of, of um, Ahsoka. Oh yeah, it was it was kind of like a I don't, I don't want to say a backstab, but I was kind of like, ooh, you know, it's kind of it a, a different way. It was it was definitely sharp. I didn't expect it the way he said it to kind of like you know this is you know, your new teacher, and maybe he'll be able to teach you uh, the ways of the Force, you know, this differently than I can. And it was just like, oh, okay. <laughs> it was, it, it's interesting because, you know, <laughs> it's interesting because we know that Obi-Wan's training of Anakin is a failure, ultimately, because we see him have that regret. We are privy to that information in the future. and we, But, but Obi-Wan doesn't really know it now, but I, there's this sense among the Jedi Council that Anakin's training just wasn't complete for whatever reason. They can't sense it because of all the death the, all the death that happens around Geonosis, so it's like this blanket across everything. So all the Jedi are a little bit scarred, right? All the Jedi are feeling a little, or they're a little bit, I don't want to say tarnished, but they're a little bit bloodied, right? They they had this battle. So they're, they're having trouble putting their finger on what's going on with Anakin, and they think maybe this can smooth everything out. And so it's, I don't know if it's so much of a slight as it's saying this is a new, like it's something you can't learn as a student. Does that make sense? Yeah, right. Give yeah. Him, yeah. Focus, give him focus. Take his mind off whatever crazy is going on. Whatever is distracting him. him. Yeah. Because that is the case. If you're like someone sees that you're having a struggle with something, well, here here's a student. Here's a student that you can teach, and you know maybe they can learn something from you, and maybe you can learn something from them. So it's a distraction, totally. And Yoda and Mace both came up with that, right? That was big, that was the big oh it might be Obi Wan's but no really it's Anakin's Padawan right I mean that was the that was the thing that was going on so makes so sense so now we know that they're having him train okay so this makes some of his grievances in Episode Three a little bit bite a little bit more too right because they're denying him the rank of master but they're making him train students mm, right mm -hmm. so now that makes that bite a little bit more and it's interesting to see how. Like the degree to which Anakin is is a, what he's doing here. Like what a, what the fully charged up, powered up Anakin Skywalker is capable of when you just sort of throw him at an army and watch him just demolish everything. Right? It, yeah. It's really something that's impressive. And in and in many ways, because what we see what we see in the actual episodes is sort of like the bookends of the Clone Wars. So we see like the Pearl Harbor and dropping the atomic bomb. You know what I mean? Like that's kind of what what we get of the Clone Wars. And this is like all the action in the middle. So this is sort of what was promised to us in episode four was that Anakin was a cunning warrior, right? He was cunning and he was going to, he was powerful. And that it's great to see it in action in the humongous setting. So super cool. Yeah, I guess they would have had to do, do this in what they, in the form, I mean, in order to tell the complete story and everything um, and to, to have the budget of just doing it in animation, I guess this is the, the best, the best alternative for that. You know, I mean, you right. can do exposition and everything in the movies and stuff, but in order to actually see 
and just to, 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 to give something for, you know, fans to really, you know, bite on and everything, you know, this, this is, this is, it is what it is. Um, and I'm appreciating, um, like the, the gap, I'm, I'm really interested to see how the, um, episode three, um, right. makes this makes sense, you know, and, and, e- and we have to decide, you know, how we're going to, you know, pre- you know, proceed as far as that. But, um, this is only just the beginning of the Clone Wars, you know, it's still a whole lot more of a story to tell before episode three, right? I mean, there is. I mean, there's a lot, obviously. And that's what makes this animated series kind of so unique, because as we all said as fans, and I think even they realized it, like that gap between Attack of the Clones and then Revenge uh, of the Sith, that's three, right? Yes. Um, So the gap was so big that like the animated series was was one of those things, kind of like the Mandalorian, to tie up these loose ends because... It's just so big. The time frame is so big. The the action, the dialogue. So the whole Clone Wars series, which lasts, I want to say, ten seasons. Um, you know, it's it's pretty long, and it, it does a lot to try to help it. But the, the only difficult part when we get back into the real movies is, like I said, we get this great development, and then it kind of like halts, and then <laughs> we get to this mini kind of conflict again. And you know, that'll be something for for our episode three watch along. But I, I like I said, I, I try to. You know, have everybody just give it a watch. I mean, even, you know, a shameless plug, but uh, if you guys have Disney Plus, which you should, hopefully all, um, <laughs> no pun intended, there's mm-hmm. actually a part in the Star Wars, in the Star Wars section, it's like an Ahsoka Tana Essentials. It literally mm-hmm. lists every episode she's been in, and you can just binge watch her, I think I want to say it's 12 episodes, and all of the Clone Wars that ties her character development together, just her alone. Uh, so, okay. yeah, shameless Disney Plus plug there, but uh, yeah, everybody, you can look at the, it's called Ahsoka Tano essentials i found it today when i was watching the movie again so i seen it on there i was like oh this is pretty cool it has all her episodes and all her action you know dialogue that was in all of clone wars every season so so and this is getting a little a little ahead and everything but i I just got it was it was a particular episode and i like i said i was talking with hitch again (laughs) and uh, um of clone wars um called rookies and mm-hmm. this was like the fifth episode of the first season. Like I said, I'm only up to episode five so far, but it focused on just the clones and they called themselves batches. So is that a reference to like that um, bad batch that's coming out? Um, yeah. And then um, I don't want to spoil as far as we'll, we'll probably get into stuff like that. But so okay, there okay. were batches. Okay. And the idea was, is like in the movie, the first movie when we saw, you know, or the second, excuse me, we saw the clones. So it's just like anything else in life. And we kind of saw that even in the um, Mandalorian when we had those whatever Snoke in these these experiments. So there were clones that came out defective, you know, just, you know, as anything would. And these batches would be like ones that didn't have the proper IQ that, you know, just there were issues with them. Um, the bad batch was just ones that weren't that didn't fall in line as far as testing specifically and things like that, and they were kind of just went rogue. They weren't I, killed I off. Found, I found that super interesting, and as far as that particular episode, I found it really emotional. As far as like a cartoon, I'm like, what is this doing here? You know, this is diff. This, and that's what I'm saying. Going from the Clone Wars movie up to this episode, just it, it was it was a lot of great character development. And it didn't really focus on Anakin and or Soka. I mean, it just really focused on like the um, the clones and their different personalities, how they relate to each other. Um, and, you know, with all of, you know, they're looking the same, obviously, and everything. But, you know, how they um, how they just affect each other and like the emotional complexity it took. And in, in, it, it was and they even cursed in one of the um, scenes. I was like, in Star Wars, really? You said that, you know? So, um, yeah, like I said, we will have to get into these episodes at some point, but just seeing how, how much development of characters, um, you know, I guess the, if you want to call it the Filoni versus it is what it is. Um, it was a great, it was a good thing to see and I'm, I'm really into it. Yeah, it's definitely an interesting one. I mean, it's just, like I said, it puts you at an awkward place right now, you know, as a fan, because a lot of people, even like Ken, though, says he doesn't really watch it. So when you see this and you see the mm-hmm. different take of somebody else on Star Wars, it, it just kind of makes you, I mean, you know, his writing, and then you see The Mandalorian, and then we see hear all these series is coming out, you know, and even the solo movie. I just think about, like, different people's spins, and then, 
you know, and we'll get to it eventually, but, you know, you, then you go to 7, 8, 9, and it's just like, you know, at this time, Filoni was on board full time. Like, what was Why the thought, you know? Why didn't what they was go? the thought? Uh, you know, we'll, we'll get into that. Uh, you know, I have my own thoughts. I'm sure you guys do. You know, Kathleen Kennedy. It's just one of those things. And even, you know, when we tie into the movies, it's just a Hollywood cinematic. You know, they spend all these monies. The die catalog, the character dialogue isn't there because, you know, look at the sets, the green screens, all this stuff. These guys spent uh, an eighth of the budget on The Mandalorian, and we got everything we wanted, you know, in, what, 30-minute shorts, you know? So I don't know if yeah. it's a Hollywood approach to movies that's changing um, to, you know, maybe it's just George just, you know, and it was the backlash we talked about. The script writing, it just was like, eh. Well, I, I, could, I, could, say, I could say movies, um, or at least, you know, back then and everything, um, they didn't take fandom as seriously you know, as they do now. Now they realize fandoms have a really large say in how movies are and, and dictate what's being put up on screen and stuff. So they really, that could either, that could either be a great thing or it could go, like, really the wrong way, you know. Right. Um, fortunately, back then, um, you know, Lucas had more control over what he wanted to see because Bobby Bauer writes, that's his baby. You know, this is his heart. He's a father of the, you know, father of the thing. <clears throat> it may not have been perfect, but it it's it um it planted enough seeds to where you can have these these bigger stories going on in the in the world. Like um if it wasn't for, you know, Phantom Menace and, and Attack of the Clones, you wouldn't have like the Clone Wars being as great as they say it eventually ends up being, you know, and Rebels and everything. Cause I like I said, I heard it got better, even better as the seasons went on. But mm -hmm. um but you got these expanded stories where you probably wouldn't have got that had Lucas just um, did his own thing, like the you know the whole time. Right. But as far as just going back to this movie, it, it was um, it was a it was a good ride. Yeah, and I, and uh, what your team, Mitch? I think you were saying that like all these different spins on all these different stories and worlds, and I you know there are like, totally different, like just from the middle trilogy to the first to the last, and then all the I mean, because there's how many different people got their hands in this pot now, yeah. as long as they don't mess up the ingredients. So right. you can, spaghetti sauce is pretty damn good, right? <laughs> you can put their own little spin on it and make, you know, make it, make it their own. As long as you don't take the tomatoes out. I mean, as long as you don't take the core ingredients and I don't know why right. I'm just ignore that. I didn't mean to like bring a food reference into this, but no, I, I, I get it. So as long as all these people with their hands on this story and, and piloting this ship in whatever way that they think it should go, as long as the spirit of the thing and what yeah. originally yeah. hooked me, the, 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 banty, the, the, the banter, the snappy dialogue, like that was all in there in this movie, the Clone yeah. Wars. Like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, all dumb, stupid humor. It was yeah. all in there. Um, I mean, it had everything. And one thing I know, and maybe I don't know if this is true or anything, like, the, the did the Trade Federation really steal technology from the Gungans? That that shield that they did was that or was that not Gungan technology? But you don't know whether that's like stolen from the Gun Guns or what the Gun Guns had was some sort of like you know like ridiculously antiquarian version of that, right? Like there's no way to tell the difference between the I, two. I guess, but I don't know. I saw that thing start up, and I was like, "What the hell is Jar Jar gonna pop out here?" And start... <laughs> is he is he like in the Trade Federation tanks, like pilot? I mean, literally, I thought they stole that technology from the Gungans because that was literally the exact same shield generator with the little dome, and it moved along. I mean, I don't know. seemed seemed like the same stuff that the Gungans would use, and I don't know, it seemed that way. But as long as they all these people keep the the spirit of the story and what Star Wars was. I mean, they could do they could do whatever they want. I'm not I'm not a hard I'm not that hardcore that I'm against someone taking it a little different way or putting a little different edge on it as long as it's got the same stuff in it. Well, if you're filling in gaps, which is what a lot of these stories are, I don't see how you can really go too far, you know, from the spirit and everything, um, because it just seems like you know a, a lot of these stories are filling in gaps of what it, what wasn't created in between certain times or whatever. I yeah. think what what we probably have to worry about is what takes place after, um, after. <laughs> yeah, yeah, episodes as seven, eight, nine, and everything. 
Because you don't want you mean, every, you, you like, mean four, five, and six. Uh, <laughs> uh, you, yeah, you mean four, five, and six. Let's be there honest. will be I mean, there will be a Star Wars style Council of Nicaea where we will decide what is canon and what is not. But that that's probably a couple couple years away from now. Uh, the yeah. team Mitch is going to throw his hat in the ring that seven, eight, and nine was just a fever dream. And then, yeah, we'll see. Oh. We'll see what happens next. But look, look, Jeez. look, look. Episode seven has 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 Han Solo in it. The real Han Solo. So I feel like. Well, yeah. If you're drawing a circle around all the movies that are canon and you don't have all the movies with Han Solo in them, mm, mm, for me, for me, it's a hard. That's a hard sell. I know that's way off topic. <laughs> like I know no, I mean seven, like, I seven was the was the beginning of the end. I'll, I'll say this, and this is you know something we'll save. For, we'll, we'll save this for when we if when we get to these movies. But we'll okay, get episode se- episode seven was the first time, and this is was still a sold out theater. That I heard somebody shout an f bomb because of what happened to Han Solo. It was rumored out there the night before, but when that happened and that scene happened, I can't believe what I heard. Yeah, it was that was rough. I cannot believe it. <laughs> they were in a, they were here in the theater, and you know, Mitch in Washington, there was literally I'd say what five hundred people in the theater yeah. to hear somebody scream, you know, right. something Disney. I was just like, wow. But like oh, you man. know, not to again, you know, whatever. This the. To, to I mean, we're going. I'll go off topic here. So for me, you know, Harrison Ford wanted to die in the sixth one. He wanted to die in, in, in Return of the right. Jedi. Yeah. So for me, it's yeah. not like yeah. they made the character moment hit, and he, you know, he, he wasn't gonna come back. <laughs> like he's yeah. done. He was yeah, done. He, so he was for me, it's like his last go So I don't have so much of a problem of a, a problem with that. Uh, you know, coming back to this movie and what and what the Filoni verse is telling me, and 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 what I'm learning about myself is that I like when they are being adjacent to the mainline characters in these in these stories so like like dp were talking about the clones and how you liked how they had their own personalities and we like we like ahsoka i i like that they're building sort of around the movies right it's not just this is this is filling in the gap they're providing Mm. depth too they're giving us more around it so we're getting to know the clones and so when oddball shows up in episode three right we know who that (laughs) is because, you know, they, and now we're invested in what's happening with them, right? And Commander Cody, and and I think Rex is even in exactly. Uh, yeah, so we. So, uh, oh really? Oh I, wow! Okay. Well, Commander that's Cody's that's definitely in it, right? I know yeah, Commander yeah. Cody's yeah. in episode three. Yeah. Yoda, <laughs> Yoda actually talks to him. Yeah, Commander uh, Cody. He's the one that initiates Order sixty six. Okay. So he's really he's really an important character. Rex, I thought was in it. I, I'm not one hundred percent sure. But okay. I remember seeing a blue painted clone trooper that had some a little more seniority than everybody else that was, uh, you know, being uh, in the, on, on the screen at that time. So I think it, well, I thought it was Rex anyway. Yeah, I'm going to be excited seeing with some of these characters. If, if what you're saying is, is 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 what you're saying is that they are in like episode three and everything. So that's that's going to be a because I've never seen any of this, you know. <laughs> so it's, it's going to be really good to see. Episode three, man. I'm, I'm, I, to, to maybe we should shake. Cause I, are we doing episode three next, guys? We haven't really talked about it, but we are, right? We're gonna do episode three next week. Is that how we're gonna do this? Yeah, I mean, we, we, yeah, we, yeah, yeah. We, okay. we can, uh, fans. What do the yeah. fans say? Anybody have any comments? Throw us the yay, nay. Well, my dad, my dad probably wants to watch episode three. So good enough. Put it that way. Good enough. I was asking him. No, I, I you know, to, to sort of, to sort of shade into episode three. You know, we know episode three ep- opens with this just epic conflagration, but in the skies above Coruscant. And, and the scope is just so enormous. And what's so nice about this movie here is that it's providing us with that depth for those other characters and filling in the gaps with what exactly have these guys been up to. You know, we sort of come in and they're 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 sort of we leave episode two and they're monks, right? And episode mm-hmm. three opens up and there's these hardened hardened <laughs> warriors. You know what I mean? Their names are ge- their first names are general <laughs> when we start episode <laughs> three. So it's so cool that we're getting that basic fill in and we're also getting a lot more depth as far as what else is going on you know why exactly is the republic crumbling you know what i mean we're getting even a little bit more of that fill in so uh i'm really excited to see episode three after seeing this it's giving me a lot more depth and then like i like dp here i'd never seen any of this stuff because uh, by 2008 i'd checked out <laughs> i was already on the other stuff mostly you thought ryan johnson directed it <laughs> <laughs> the beginning and the end and everything oh man yeah 
Um, yeah, I mean, good, good watch. Um, you know, different, def- definitely a different watch from what we've seen in the first two, um, you know, first two episodes there. Mm-hmm. And really, um, really interesting to see how it ties together with what was already presented because this came out like right after, right after episode, the, 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 um, the um revenge of the sith didn't it it came yeah, out right? in 2008 yeah. and rts was 2005 so yeah. three years later right yeah 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 i would just remember everyone was excited for another star wars movie right after um revenge of the sith and they got this <laughs> and it was like this is not what we wanted <laughs> no this was in theaters the same time as watchmen it was like that spring. Was it? It was, oh, and, I, and I remember yeah. going into Watchmen, and I was super hungover. Don't don't tell anyone that. And <laughs> and I remember seeing that there was a Star Wars movie, and I oh, remember, man. yeah, no, don't say shh. Uh, but I remember like walking by the theater and being like, wait a minute, why didn't I know this movie was coming out? <laughs> I remember thinking, like, how did I not get marketed to about this? Because I felt like, you know, I should be in the Target demo. <laughs> I'm the guy that, um, as if you've made the target demo of Star Wars stuff, future Star Wars podcasters, I was right, <laughs> right down the middle there, and I had no idea. So. Well, all right, guys, before we jump off of here, let's we can go around the table, and uh, I guess we'll give our review and our rating of this movie. Uh, do you want to start with, uh, start it off, Kendo? Sure. If you haven't watched this, watch it. Get Disney Plus. Go to Half Price Books and buy it. Whatever. <laughs> Watch it. It's worth it's worth the hour and thirty eight minutes. It's worth the five bucks it'll cost you to buy the damn thing. It's worth seven ninety nine a month for Disney Plus. Whatever. Watch it. It's really good. Uh, and like we've like we've said, it fills in the space between Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith. It fills in all all of the all of the the, the battles and where all the the characters got their their titles, General Kenobi, and and what, how how that how the Clone Wars, which they talk about so much in you know four, five, and six, how that all happened is a big part, and it's no fluff. Uh, there's no preachy politics. It's just blowing up battle droids and super battle droids and blowing up tanks and watching Anakin do his thing. So watch it. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Hitch? You know, for me, uh, as somebody who, you know, missed it the first time around, I thought it was I thought it was pretty good. <clears throat> Certainly not not as enjoyable as, say, you know, an actual canonical mainline Star Wars movie that I saw in theaters and have a lot of, you know, uh, nostalgic sort of feelings about. But something that was enjoyable. It's good for kids. And if you're somebody who is going to, oh, I don't know, have uh, a daughter in the near future and you're thinking to yourself, what sort of characters is this is your daughter going to be into? Well, you know, Ahsoka is going to be on that list. And so this is going to be important information for you to have as it's sort of the issue number one, so to speak, for her. Um, In the standpoint of like, you know, you're probably bored. I mean, we've been on lockdown for a year. So if you haven't seen this movie yet, it's definitely a good investment of 90 minutes. If I'm grading it on the real Star Wars scale that we use, if I'm going to apply the same standards to this and say Rogue One or, or Solo... I would probably say this this gets me it's like a six and a half. You know, if it were in theaters I probably would have would be like, eh, I don't know, but you know, for Disney Plus in my house, good way to spend eighty eight minutes. Right. What about you, DP? Yeah, I'm I'm between like a six and a seven. Like I said, it was a, a bit more pleasurable um uh than than what I've heard this this movie, you know. Yeah, as far as a whole, like, you know, um, um, prequel tri- trilogies and stuff, period. There's just been so much backlash on it, you know, how much people hate it and everything. I'm like, you know, rewatching this, it's, it's not that bad. You know, it's Star Wars. I mean, what do you expect it to be? It's not like Game of Thrones or like The Godfather and stuff. You know, take it for what it's worth. It has some really good, like, lessons and stuff and, you know, really good life teachings and stuff that you can actually, you know, get into. This, um, I, I love seeing Ahsoka. Um, I'm liking the, um, the, the, the camaraderie and, you know, the, the, the banter between, you know, the two, I like the way Anakin calls her snipes or whatever, you know, cause he's all, she's always snipping at him and everything, you know, that was a cute little, you know, nickname for her and everything. Um, and she's really into being the Padawan, you know, for him and everything. So, um, uh, it's really interesting to see the complete, you know, the growing complexities of the clones. 
Um, and I am I'm, I'm also excited to see you know future episodes with just the the development of bringing on different characters that we've never seen before, you know, in the movies and everything, you know, that we're now just now seeing and maybe like the Mandalorian and, you know, other things. So um, great in the movie as the movie, like I said, between a six and seven to me. Yeah. I, I was going to give it a six when I saw this initially time and time. And, you know, uh, the crazy thing is with our discussion with the fandom here, uh, everybody listening in their vehicles um, on, you know, through different podcasts, you know, I, you know, you guys sway my opinion. So I, I've actually upgraded mine to a seven. Wow. And the reason I, wow. the reason I went up to a seven for this movie <laughs> is really going to be just the development we've seen of Obi Wan. Um, it's really the writing, the animation. Like we said, it's oh eight. It was rough. I, I really didn't care much for it at the time. But as I've grew older and I see Filoni's vision for Star Wars, and keep in mind this is pre Disney. Um, yeah, and he's one—he's one of the only people that survived the whole, I guess, you know, the restructuring. But uh, you know, the fact that you know these stories were out there, I, I, I turned a blind eye to this. I'm just like Hitch, you know. I was like, well, whatever, you know, mm-hmm. turn a blind eye to it. Now, the more I watch it, you know, you see how talented of a guy he is, you know. And so, you know, just for it itself, the you know the development of the characters was great. The movie wasn't the best, but as you said, for you know a watch. Um, I, and I actually think the replayability isn't that bad. I think I might watch it one or two more times, or if you had children to watch it with, it's something you can kind of get through again. But um, yeah, you know, I'm going to give it a seven. I really liked it. It's just a good story, you know. And, and one final interesting sidebar that you know, it's crazy. You know, it, could you imagine Filoni? And this is like I said, taking it way off topic. Imagine Filoni in the in the Marvel universe just with his writing. I mean, he's, this guy is so talented. I, I I didn't know much of him, you know, at this time. At oh eight, I'm what a junior in college, senior in college. So yeah, I really wasn't into you know movies and like that. But seeing him as uh, this back in two thousand eight, now to what twenty twenty one, what he's doing, I can only imagine you know if this guy gets his hands on anything else. I mean, this guy is brilliant. Well, if you watch it, you watch his first work, El, uh, Elf. I mean, you could really see where all this comes from. He was in he was in that movie. He was the the yeah. doctor, uh, and he was in there for a few minutes, but he made an impression, and he was able to interact. And I think he that that was his that was his that was his start into like the fantasy uh, uh, fantasy the love of fantasy worlds and building worlds and characters and different like things that were real life you could believe it, but in another galaxy. So I mean, if you look at everything he's done, he's always put his own little spin, his own little. Felony on it, you know, his little felonyism. So he's a great guy. I think. I think. He, I think he'd be a good guy to know too. You know. Just, yeah. Yeah. You know, he's yeah. A, um, as a friend. Good. <laughs> I mean, maybe he can get you into that, that galaxy's edge. He you know? get you in somewhere like yeah. in the or move, wink, got, wink. VIP. Yeah. Yo. I could yeah, be the guy. Hey, Felony, come on the show. Of, yeah, absolutely. Hey, We'd be welcome. Please. Yeah, we would welcome him. I figure hey. out how to do a fifth feed. I would learn how to do it. For Dave. <laughs> Put it right uh, in the middle there. Absolutely. Yeah, we cool. figure it out, right? We give him the big. We'll we'll give him the big ISO camera. Right? Oh yeah. And nobody needs yeah, to see us. Go. Hey Ken, real quick. Uh, what was your number? Because I didn't. I got everybody else's. What was your out of ten? Oh, uh, I would go seven, eight, moving to eight. I'd probably go to watch it again, but you know, uh, it's yeah, seven. Man. You know, I would. Yeah. I'm not gonna go ten like I normally do. <laughs> it's okay. Break the streak, buddy. It's Clone Wars the special edition. Maybe it'll get a ten. You know, when they add like more of Jabba's son. You know, a little bit more. <laughs> Can we get more stinky? <laughs> Can we get more stinky? Can we really get the stink out here? I but... hope we're back here next week, and I'm like, I watched the rest of Clone Wars, and there was no stinky at all, and I just want to say that the Filoni lied to us. It's Lucy Van Pelt. Mm. But yeah, once again, guys, I, like I said, thank everybody for coming on with us. Um, everybody, whether you're watching us live on Facebook, YouTube, uh, listening to us on all your different platforms, podcasts, please give us a, you know, five star rating on all those, you know, digital streaming services, uh, you know, a like on the video, um, subscribe, share, retweet, whatever you have to do, please interact with us. We're here for you guys. Um, and uh, once again, we'll be back again next week. Um, and actually, instead of just 
jumping into it, maybe we'll announce on our mediums what we'll do. So for some of our people who interact with us, we'll, we'll announce on our platforms what we're going to be doing as far as the next episode to kind of give you guys a cliffhanger if we decide to go at episode three or maybe even, you know, sidebar into something else. So uh, like I said, if everybody's interacting, you know, find a way to interact with us, please, because we're going to keep delivering content to you guys and, and hopefully everybody's enjoying it. But, uh, Outside of that, guys, you know, I appreciate everybody from coming on. And until the next episode, this is the way. This is the way. Nerdcyclopedia.